all day, ah, but a sad one. It was just such a day as this 40 years ago. 40 years? It's a long time. Anyhow, we were happier then, much happier. We were standing here on this very spot, eat of the night. We'd be standing here still if she wasn't so stupid. Now he wants his hat. It's freshly in you. How do you feel? Well, I tell you, I'm a man that's allergic to water. Now, jump, Martha, jump, Bart. So you saved me, Louis. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, isn't it, though? On second thought, I agree with you. Oh, Pop, you've got a lot to live for yet. Have I now? Well, what are you sending there, Keith? Be off. If you're broke, maybe I can help you out. That's very kind of you. How? By getting you a job. What kind of a job? Kind of fussy, Amy. I wasn't talking to you. You were saying, young lady. If you come and see me, maybe we can build something else. I gotta hurry now. I'm late for work already. What's your name? Judy. Judy Peabody. Where can I find you? I work at the store club. The store club? What's that? A family home? <laughs> well, there are a lot of beautiful babies there. Well, take care of yourself, Pop. I will, thanks. Want a lift? Lift? In my car. No, thanks. I've got to carry me over. You know, I figured that out for myself. You're all wet, sir. I didn't think it showed. And, and whatever happened to your chin? Why, did I lose it? It's bleeding. A girl clipped me. She was trying to protect herself. I see, sir. No, you don't. I was drowning. How awful. You better take off those wet clothes, sir. I'll, uh, I'll telephone Dr. Marston immediately. Give me your waistcoat, sir. You're all right. Sound as a dollar. Sound as a dollar? Now, what does that mean? You'd better stay in bed today, J.B. I'll look in on you in the morning. Don't bother. Every time you look in on me, it costs me ten bucks. Goodbye, J.B. Will there be anything else, sir? She called Curtis. He's on his way over here, sir. Good. Sit down, Miss. I beg your pardon, sir. Sit down, sit down, man. I want to ask you something. 
fist did you ever draw? Why, uh, no, sir. I mean almost. What I just did. As I was going down for the third time, my whole life flashed before me just like a movie. How was it, sir? It stank. I understand, sir. Oh, you do, huh? Well, matter. Fisk, I want to ask you something as man to man. If I had drowned, would you have missed me? Yes, sir, I would. You're lying. No one had missed me. Not even my wife. I'm sure Mrs. Bates would be inconsolable, sir. Nah, she wouldn't shed a tear. Well, maybe one or two, just to be polite. I'm certain Mrs. Bates loves you very much and always will, sir. Then why did she up and leave me? You told her to. That's no excuse. I don't want to see anybody but me lawyer. Very well, sir. Look in, Mr. Curtis. Hello, Hiya, J.B. Got here as soon as I could. Remind me to give you a medal. <laughs> Scotch and soda, please, sir. Why can't you drink bourbon? Scotch costs money. Oh, you got enough money to buy all the scotch in town. Scotch and soda, please. Bring me one, too. Very well, sir. May as well try it before it's all gone. Well, J.B., what's on your mind? Tom, I want to do something for a young lady, something in a financial way. Financial? I'm blonde or brunette? Blonde. Hair of spun gold. How old is she? Oh, 21 or 22, I say. It's your age, I'd say. Yeah, I know what you say, but don't say it. I fell in the ocean and she saved me life. Mm -hmm. So now you're feeling generous, huh? Very. I want to make her life beautiful. Well, you can count me out. Count you out? What do you mean? Remember, I've seen your burst of benevolence before. Ah, but this one is different. So was Goggin. He was sorry for him. Ordered me to pay him $50 a week for life. And you felt you robbed him of his incentive to work and stopped his allowance. I was right. You were right and I was hooked. I've been paying him out of my own pocket ever since. Well, if I take Goggins back, will you do what I ask? Uh-uh. I don't want to wind up supporting any blonde. Well, supposing I give you a signed paper saying I can't stop you. How would that do? Well, if you can't stop me, it's okay. Ah, good man. Anything else, sir? Yeah, lock up the scotch. Uh, just how happy do you want to make this girl? Completely happy. It won't cost much. I'm sure her wants a small. How do you figure that out? By the bathing suit she was wearing. Look, why don't you leave it to my judgment? I learned about making girls happy the hard way. What's your name? Judy Peabody. Where does she live? I don't know, but she works at the Stork Club. Stork Club? You know the place? Very well. If you'd lived any kind of life at all, you'd know about it, too. I know, I know. But this girl, Judy, she still has her life before her. At least I live the joy of making her future a bright one. I think you're on the level this time. Of course I am. That's just one thing. She's not under any circumstances to know it comes from me. She thinks she saved a poor man. To Judy. To Judy, who works at the stock club and whose wants are small. I wonder. Bill? Hey, kid, you're late again. Go through the kitchen so Billingsley won't get wise. I got a better way. Well, you finally got here. What's your reviews tonight? Since when do I have to explain that I have Oh, hello, Mr. Billingsley. I didn't know you were here. Yes, I happen to be one of the people I haven't borrowed from the place. <laughs> Could I have a word with you? Oh, certainly. I'm all ears. Come with me, please. Where are you going to collect unemployment insurance? Hello, Sherman. Good evening, Dave. Boss, will you step into the pantry? One of the waiters, Rocco, was caught walking out with a ham. Give him back the ham. Here, you might want to make some sandwiches. Now you can leave and keep going. Dorothy Lamour and Paddy are devil three. We sent her and the other lady a bottle of perfume each with my compliments. And no check. Yes, sir. She used to sing with the band here. Can't figure out why she left me. She's a star in the movies now. Yes, I heard that. 
Just received a reservation for Lieutenant and Mrs. Robert Taylor. Oh, that would be uh, Ruby Stevens. Forget what she changed her name to. You must mean Barbara Stanwyck. Oh, yes, that's it. A uh, bottle of champagne for Ruby and Bob and no check. Yes, sir. Tell me, Miss Peabody, what do you think of the store club? Oh, swell. That was a nice tour we had just now. I operate this club along my own original ideas. Yes, sir. Particularly when you say no check. You see, the store club is the mecca for celebrities from all over the world. They come here to eat, see, and be seen. As part of our audience, they attract an audience. Get it? Oh, now I do. I want the right people here, in the club and on my staff. And one thing I demand of my staff is punctuality, a fact you continue to ignore. Mr. Billingsley, I'm sorry. It's like I'm this. I'm not interested in excuses. You always have excellent ones. Oh, but the things that happen to me, they're just fantastic. Now, the fact that... Now, never mind. You understand, don't you? I think I do. Well, sure you do. You're smart. That's why I hired you. Yeah? A girl like you is an asset to the stork club. Honest? Why should I lie to you? Could I run it by myself? No. I need plenty of help, good help. People who think of me once in a while, like you. I've had my eye on you for a long time, Judy. You don't want to be a hat check girl all your life, do you? Oh, certainly not. Well, then use your head, be on time. I like to see you around. Go along now. And I'm not fired for being late? No, but don't let it happen again. Oh, gee, thanks, it won't. I want you above all to set a good example for the rest of the girls. Okay, boss. The food, wanna go? Sure, do you know if he's going? I don't know, but I bet he does. Gee, I wish I could get on so he could hear me sing. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening. You know that Billings, he's the most generous guy I ever knew. He was wonderful to me. Yeah? Yeah, but I hate to say this. I think he's a little bit screwy. Screwy? Why? Well, he thinks that Barbara Stanwyck is a girl named Ruby Stevens. Cracking up. Definitely. <laughs> Say, this ain't fair. No, but I'll bet it looks that way. Ah, oh, don't the music get you. He's had me. My boyfriend's a band leader. Yeah, what does he play? He doesn't. He's a Marine in the Pacific. I get you. with this band, but I guess that's out for the duration. Hey, by the way, I haven't heard from him in a couple of months. Does that mean anything? Anything. Hey, Billingsley just came in. Where is he? Over by the door. Attention, everybody. In this canteen, we entertain ourselves. Any volunteers? Put me down. That's the boss's face. I want to know how I did. Good night. I came totally unprepared. <laughs> How about a little help from my quartet? We'll okay, be right, right up. Right okay, fellas. Hey, <laughs> kid, you a wonder. Did you watch his face? How could I? He took it with him. The land is not what they used to be. The, the comfort of shrunk over them. Try to do it, diddly do it, do do. I showed you you'll get the letter at two o'clock. Sure, I'm sending it by special messenger. Good, good. I got to be there. I got to see your face when she gets it. You see, I'm a nosy kind of a Santa Claus. You know, it's crazy, J.B., putting on those old rags. Rags, are they? Here, feel that material. You won't get that quality nowadays. No, thanks. Play something, will jump out and bite you. Exactly. Now, look, you want to be anonymous. If you hang around, she's going to smell a rat. Nonsense. She thinks I'm a poor man. She wants to get me a job. 
<laughs> What'll you do if she does? Never give it a thought. That's a nasty complication. Well, I'll cross that bridge when I cross it. How do I look? You look like a tramp. I wouldn't think it possible. Uh -huh. Look at the head start you got. Nothing you can say can annoy me today. Come on, drive into town. I wouldn't walk to the corner, will you? Excuse me. I wonder would you be kind enough Here to... you are. And don't tell me you're going to spend it on food. Well, how dare you? Are you, are you awesome? Come There it is, sure enough. Check your hat. Ha! Oh, you dirty. How have you been anyway? I didn't mean manager. Anyhow, you're still alive. Is he? Oh, Gwen, this is Pop. I pulled him out of the ocean. Why? Young lady, what kind of a question is that? Have you no feeling for your fellow man? Not a thread. I'm going to go paying attention to her, Pop. Listen, you stick around. I'm going to see what I can do about getting you a job. No hurry, no hurry at all. It's any time. Don't want to work, huh? I'm beginning not to like you. Don't encourage it. Look, Pop, you want to make something out of yourself, don't you? He already has. Look at him. You do want to work, don't you? Well, not if I can possibly escape it. I'm not an easy place to have limitations. What'll I do with them? Throw him back in the ocean. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, thanks. But I am going to get him a job. Hey, Pop. Bula, take a powder. I wonder what your mother was like. <laughs> Mr. Coretti, how are you fixed for help? Help? You mean there's somebody who wants to work? Well, I ain't thinking you'd be talked into it. Judy, for a good way that I would give both of my right eyes. Oh, he's more the busboy type. Then I'll give only one. Well. This is Pop. Mr. Coretti, Pop. Mr. Coretti, is it? Come with me. Good luck, Pop. What happened? Coretti snapped him up like that. I bet he hasn't worked since Sing Sing. <laughs> I remember what I said. Don't pile too many dishes on one tray. Be careful to the waiters. To the waiters? Yes. We can get all the customers we want on your way. I'm not finished with this yet, boy. Right as far as I'm. nonetheless of me for being the kind of man I am. It's not that I'm not grateful to you because I am. That's okay, Pop. I'll think of something else. Oh, no, you won't. You go over there and sit down. I'll be off in a few minutes and we'll talk about it. Well, we can talk about it, I guess. Why don't you give him a couple of bucks and let him go? No, I like him. I think I'll adopt him. Now, Judy, you don't know anything about his parents. Where can I find Miss Judy Peabody? I'm Judy Peabody. Yeah. 
it isn't. What have you been up to? Nothing. Why? That line, you have been most accommodating. That's a lie. Oh, I wouldn't take that too seriously. Somebody thinks very highly of you. I'll say they do. Nothing like that ever happens to me. <laughs> do you think it could be on the level? It's a six to find out. That's right. Locks Fifth Avenue is the biggest store in New York. They sell everything from a baseball bat to a diamond lavalier. Who needs a diamond lavalier? A very good. If that letter means what I think it does, you'll need a baseball bat. I'll try it out on Pop. On me? We'll take you to the men's department and get you outfitted from head to foot. If it works, we'll buy out the joint. There. A complete metamorphosis. Well, thank you to keep a civil tongue in your head. We'll take two more, a blue and a gray. Oh, gee, Pop, you look wonderful. I'm proud of you. I wish I could share your joy. Uh, is this cash or a charge, miss? Um, charge. Thank you. Mr. Hanson! Mr. Hanson! But that's a house detective. Your name, please? Judy Peabody. Your address? The store club. You live there? What fun! Shall we send this, Miss Peabody? Uh, no, we'll take him with us. Hanson, credit manager. Miss Peabody? Why, of course, Miss Peabody. It's a pleasure to welcome you to Locks. I'm glad to meet you, too. Uh, uh, we've been expecting you. Then uh, everything's all right? Perfectly in order. Where are the mink coats? Genuine Labrador mink, Miss Peabody. Minks? Most unhealthy little animals. How much is it? Six thousand dollars. Feel it, sir. I can feel it from here. Oh, it's beautiful. And the price is right. But, Judy, wouldn't it be better if you first looked at some nice cloth coats? Oh, Pop, you have no idea what mink means to a woman. I'll take two. Two? <laughs> My coming out present for you. Oh, Judy, I couldn't think of it. What do you mean? You've been thinking of it for years. We'll wear them. Today? In all this heat? Wouldn't you? Uh, yes, Miss Peabody. Miss Peabody's the young lady in white. But, Judy, it's August, and one of the hottest days in the year. So what? You melt in a fur coat. Yeah, but I look awful good doing it. <laughs> Miss Peabody? Yes? I'm Higgins, your chauffeur. Yeah? Your car's at the north entrance. My... Car. Yes, miss. Um, well, why weren't you at the store club to pick me up? Sorry, miss, but I was instructed to move your things to the York Tower. Oh, well, um, well, see that it doesn't happen again. I can stand it no longer. You may go, Hawkins. Uh, Higgins, miss. Higgins, Schmiggins, you may go anyway. <laughs> Curtis, what are you trying to do to me? That girl is here buying fur coats and in bunches like, like bananas. Well, you wanted to make her happy, didn't you? Sure, I wanted to make her happy, but not hysterical. Cars, chauffeurs, your towers. They're, they're, they're going to break me. <laughs> well, J.B., if she does, you can always come and stay with me. I don't want to stay with... I keep them out of the sun as much as possible. We'll get a couple of parasols. That's a good idea. Call again, Miss Peabody. We will if we're in town. Where have you been? Uh, getting me second wind. And now for the dresses. Judy's a 
Pete's sake, buy something and let's get out of here. All right. Miss. Yes, Miss Peabody. I, I don't know if they're all so beautiful, but um, I'll take that one and um, that one and um, and that one and and that one. I'll take that and, one and that one and that one and that one. Why don't you take them all? All right, Pop. I'll take them all. There are only two apartments to a floor up this high. Who has the other apartment? It's vacant at present. Why don't you minute and protect yourself? Would you be having an aspirin on you? No, sir, I'm sorry. This way, Miss Peabody. This is the living room. Shall I take you through the rest of the apartment? No, we'll do that later. If there's anything I can do, just call me. Thank you, I will. Here, honey. I did a little shopping on my own. What is it? A persuader. You shouldn't have done it. I'm liable to maim somebody for life. Gwen, it's got me down. I can't stand it. All this is enough to drive me out of my mind. Take it easy, duty. Relax. I have, so why can't you? Take what's freely given to you. Providence works its wonders in mysterious ways. Providence doesn't go around opening charge accounts for hat check girls. Well, well I be running along. Oh no, Pop, don't go. I need your moral support. Do you now? Besides, where'll you go? Oh, I'll be all right. Sure, curled up on a park bench somewhere. Well, not exactly. Have you anyone, Pop, you're close to? Not anymore. What happened? My wife left me six months ago. Why? I told her to. There was a slight complication. Another man, Clarence Bascom. Was Bascom younger than you? No, 65. Oh, he had money. Not as much as I. She left you for another bum? I don't get it. Pop, a man 65 is harmless. I'm 65 and I'm not harmless. So far as my wife is concerned, I mean. That's a picture. Isn't she lovely? Yes, Pop. I think the whole thing must have been your fault. Why does everyone say it with Edith? I... Now, I... now, Pop. Till you get yourself straightened out, you better stay here with me. All right. Only I'll have to leave you from time to time. Now, Pop, you've got to give up all that panhandling. From now on, I'm taking care of you. Now, go pick yourself out a room. I want to talk to Gwen. All right. Gwen, I'm scared. What are you going to do, move out? I am not. I'm going to find out who the wolf is. Well, whoever he is, he sure howls pretty. Well, it won't do him any good. I'm saving myself for Danny. Suppose Danny finds out. Oh, how's he going to find out? Way out there in the Pacific. You know, I got a hunch there's another Judy Peabody. Say, I never thought of that. I wonder who she is. I wonder what she does. Wait a minute, Judy. That letter was sent to the stork club. Think back. Have any of the customers been particularly nice to you lately? I can't think of anybody. I've got it. What? Who is the most generous man in the world? Who gives away more than anybody else? Sherman Billingsley. Billingsley? Oh, no, I've been there over three years, and I've never even seen him look sidewise at anybody. Just the same, he's around 40, and that's a dangerous age. You know, he was awful nice to me in his office yesterday. Well, there you are. I'm awful glad you bought this baseball bat. Why? Sherman Billings is going to look pretty silly with no teeth. Are you quitting the job? No, I'm not. But I'm going to play sick tonight. i got to have time to think this thing over. Do you want me to tell him? No, I'll phone. Check your hat, Marine. I'm looking for Judy Peabody. She's not on till nine tonight. Still works here, huh? Oh, that's great. I like things to stay the same. Makes a guy feel like he's really home again. 
You were Danny. That's right. How'd you know? Oh, she talks a lot about you. Still? There are 12 of us here. We all know you. Store Club Club from Molly speaking. Who? Judy? Hold on a minute. Hey, Judy, shall I tell her you're here? No, no, I want to surprise her. Yeah, Judy. Yeah. Yeah, okay, where are you? York Tower? Oh, uh-huh. So long. She's at the York Tower, Suite 32A. York Towers? What is she doing there? Nothing you gotta worry about. Yeah, that's right. You're still head man. Oh, sure, I know that. I was just thinking I'd like to see her right away. And <laughs> you know how it is. Well, get going. <laughs> you want to see what I brought her? Sure. Hey, go look. You probably think I got it in China. Well, didn't you? No, Frisco. Oh, she'll <laughs> love it. I hope so. Well, I gotta be running along. I'll see you later. So long. Surprise? Danny. 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 Are you all right? Sure, sure I'm all right. Move, Danny, move. Do something. Well, I... Baby, how I've waited for this. Talk yet for a while. Talking would make sense now. We can talk later. Oh, I just want to look at you, make sure it's you, but you still feel the same. You do, don't you? Yes, Danny. Oh, sure, sure. I can see it in your eyes. Your eyes talk, Judy. I say what you're thinking. I always did. Oh, I knew you wouldn't change. I've got some good news for you, honey. Ah, you're good news to me. Yeah, but wait. I got a band all set to go. So soon? Oh, wait till you hear them. The pick of the country, top men. I organized them at Mary Island Hospital while we were waiting to be discharged. Oh, gee, Danny, it sounds great. Yeah, but I got to work fast. If I don't get us a job, I'll lose them. You can't hold guys like these together without dough. How would you like to work at the store club? Well, is there a chance? I think it can be fixed. I'll talk to the boss. Oh, the same old Judy, huh? <laughs> You're going to sing with the band. You know that, don't you? Am I, Danny? Nothing but the best for me. Oh, say, I brought you a little something. Did you, darling? This isn't very much. Oh, Danny, it's beautiful. Try it on. I had to guess at the size. As if you didn't know. <laughs> That's a pretty nifty looking dress you got on. Turn around, Judy. Yeah, very nifty. Do you like it? Yeah. Business must be good in the check room. Where are we, Judy? Uh, let's try the jacket uh, on. Whose apartment is this? Well, uh, in a way, it's mine, Danny. In a way? Uh, yes. What kind of a way? In a perfectly innocent way. You live here alone? Well, well, practically. Well, I picked myself out a fine room. Oh. Who's that? Uh, the butler. Butler? I'm a Mr. Butler. This is Mr. Wilton. Danny Wilton. Can it be? Danny, the young man you're in love with. Now, look, who are you two trying to kid? Oh, honest, Danny, Mr. Butler knows all about you. Yeah? Well, I'd like to know all about Mr. Butler. Oh, that's easy. And this apartment. Well, that's not so hard either. Well, not for you, I guess. All right, I'll tell you. I inherited some money. 
I see. Uh, from an uncle who's in oil. Uh, of course, the income's only temporary. <laughs> uh, the will's being contested in Tuss, Oklahoma. By whom? Some Indians. Relatives? Oh, only on my father's side. Stop it, Judy. You're being ridiculous. All right. Do you want to hear the honest truth? Well, yes, yes, go on. Well, it's, it's like this. It's him. You see, I saved his life, and he was so grateful. So grateful that he bought you extravagant clothes, expensive apartments. That's right. He isn't it? Of course it is. Fair. Why don't you stop lying? I've heard of things like this happening to other guys while they're away, but I didn't think it could happen to me. I kept thinking you were different. Day after day and night after night, it was the one thought that kept me going. Danny, please listen to me. I can explain. No, thanks. I've heard enough. How did you make up that story about it being me? How could I tell him the truth when I don't even know it myself? Why didn't you show him the letter? Oh, well, fine. Then he'd think the worst. The letter says I've been very accommodating. Oh, if only he'd come home yesterday. I'm sorry this happened. Maybe I could help you to find out who he is. Oh, but you don't understand, Pop. You see, I think I know who it is. Oh, you do? Yes, my boss. Bill Ainsley. And the worst of it is I have to go to him tomorrow to see that Danny gets the job at the stork. Now, Judy, promise me you won't do anything we'll both be sorry for. What do you think I am? Don't answer that. Any calls? Judy at the cloakroom is here to see you. Oh. Well, okay, tell her to come in. Sit down, Judy. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Is anything wrong? Not yet. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Everything's fine. You've been very nice to me, and I appreciate it. It's nothing. Oh, no? Certainly not. Look, sure, Mr. Billingsley, that's right about my being under no obligation, isn't it? Your only obligation to me is to be on time and do your work properly. I don't get it. There is one thing, however. What? We'll get along much better without these surprise visits. I get it. Oh, I almost forgot what I came here to tell you. What's that? I have a little suggestion. Well, is it about the check room? No, it's about... Well, don't bother then. I want to make a deal with you. You take care of the check room and let me run the stork club. Do you mind? Come in, Miss Peck. Pardon me. Well, Miss Peabody, when does my band open at the store? It doesn't. I mean, it no? doesn't. No? Well, the way you two came out just now, I thought we were all set. Oh, Danny, don't jump at conclusions. Are you serious? Well, there are some circumstances... I'll say there are, but you're not going to involve me in them. I come back and find you at the York Towers, dressed like something out of vogue, in the company of an old man you can't explain, and now I see you with the boss's arm around you. Some circumstances. <laughs> It does look kind of funny, doesn't it? Not to me, it doesn't. Danny, you're walking out on a girl who's no different than she ever was. There'll come a time when you'll find that out. Then how will you feel? When I find that out, I'll let you know. Thank you. No matter how I figure it out, I always come back to the same thing. What's that? I love him. <laughs> I gathered that. I just can't let him lose his band. Me and the bargain. Well, how's he going to keep the guys if he can't get a job? Maybe he can't keep them, but I can. How's that again? You wait and see. When we knock off here, we're going over where he's rehearsing. Oh, I was hoping we could go shopping again. I could use a new girdle. Who couldn't?
take five. Jimmy! Gwen! You stood me up the last time we had a date. That was three years ago. What happened? Well, I'll tell you. I was standing on the corner, a military band went by, and the next thing I knew, I was in Camp Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you one more chance. Meet me tonight on the same corner. You got a deal. Danny, can I see you a minute? Okay. The band is swell, Danny. Thanks. And if you open in a good spot, your fortune is made. That's right. You like rich guys, don't you? What kind of a crack is that? This is a waste of time, Judy. But I'm in a spot to help you keep the band together. Thanks. I'll find a way to do that. Now, you run along, will you? No, I won't. I'm going to get sore in a minute. I'm sore now. This is very embarrassing. Don't blush so easy. You ought to. Get smart. I'm loaded like a transport. Will you blow? It's land lease. Don't be a chump. No. <laughs> well, thanks, Judy. Nice should have been drop in on us. <laughs> Don't mention it, Danny. Well, fellas, you're all set. From now on, you have nothing to worry about. You're all moving in the York Towers as my guest so you get in the right spot. Hey, that's all right. hey, now, wait a minute. Oh, well, Danny thought maybe you fellas wouldn't like it. Why not? Tell us more. Nothing doing. I won't stand for it. Can you make us a better offer? Well, no, but we'll get started eventually, and then... Never mind that. I'm all for it. What do you guys say? Well. Pop, we're going to have company. Oh, uh, put me shoes on. The Wall Street Journal... Pop, you slay me. You seem in mighty good spirits. In a way, I am. I'd like to speak to the manager, Mr. Gray. You made it up with the young man? No, Pop, that's all off. Ah, uh, that's a pity. Mr. Gray, this is Miss Peabody. Is the apartment next to mine still vacant? It is? How many rooms has it? Twelve? That's fine. I'll take it. You can charge it to my account. Or in about an hour. Operator, will you connect me with Rock's Fifth Avenue? Now, what are you up to? I'm going to ruin Billingsley or somebody. Locks, Mint Department, please. I'll show him. I'll smoke him out. I'll spend every cent he's got. Yeah, but why? He ruined my love affair, that's why. Mint Department, this is Miss Judy Peabody at the York Towers. Could you send a representative up to my apartment to measure 12 men oh. for dinner jackets, tropicals, and a half dozen business suits apiece? Then there'll be shoes, shirts, and collars and ties besides. Uh, that's fine. Thank you very much. What have I done? Pop, did you hurt yourself? What? When you bumped into the wall just now. Did I bump into the wall? Well, what do you think? Judy, I must tell you something. I am a man... Now, don't tell me you're leaving again. I think both of us should leave. Not me. I'm after somebody's scalp, and I won't rest till I get it. But Judy, it's my scalp. You must have hit your head. Why don't you go lie down? Judy, you must believe me. I'm a rich man. I hope to bring a little happiness into your life because you saved mine. But, me good girl, your kind of happiness is more than I can afford. Well, why don't you stop it, Pop? I thought of that one ahead of you. Call Curtis. Find out for yourself. Yeah, he would know. I want to talk to him anyway. His number is Victor, 21098. You read that on his letter to me. Call him. Call him. Get me Rector, 21098, please. Well? Oh, yeah, put her on. Hello, Miss Peabody. How are you? Yes? Uh-huh. Of course, of course. All right, I'll be right up. Now, either you're crazy or I'm going to be. We'll soon find out. Come in. Sorry to intrude. You're not intruding. I have the key and we're all set. There's only one thing I'd like to make clear to you. I'm accepting your hospitality because I have to. But I want you to know that you're going to get every cent back. Every cent, do you understand? Yes, Danny. Young man, I like you. I like your ideas. I like the way you talk. I like everything about you. I wish I could return the compliment. Goodbye. A fine lad. Yes. That's one of the things that's the matter with him. I'll get it, Pop.
Are you Mr. Curtis? Yes, Miss Peabody. Come in. Thanks. Well, it took you long enough to get here. Now, sir, tell this young lady who I am. Oh, I never saw you before in my life. Huh? Is he annoying you? Yes, he is. He told me a terrible lie. I told her who I was. I expect you to confirm it. I think the poor old chap's demented. Come on, you better get out of here, old man. Oh, no. I don't mind if he stays here. I just wish he'd behave himself. What did he do? Will you or will you not tell her who I am? <laughs> Please, if you're not sure who you are, don't advertise the fact. Oh, Mr. Curtis, I'm trying to find out who's keeping me. Well, you mustn't do that. Your benefactor's a very generous man, but he wants to stay unknown. I'll find out who he is some way. I don't think you will, Miss Peabody. Is it you? <laughs> I pay the bills, though, and you go right ahead and do anything that's going to make you happy. Oh! Um... Well, whoever he is, I'll break him if it's the last thing I do. Well, that will take quite a bit of doing, Miss Peabody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Curtis! Hiya, J.B. Oh, you know me now. How dare you say you didn't know me? Well, you told me not to let her know who you are. Never mind what I tell you to do. You do what I tell you. <laughs> I'll try to remember that. That girl's out to break me. How can she, J.B.? She's organized. Look, you're a solvent. What can it cost you? Two or three hundred thousand dollars. And, of course, the gift tax. Gift tax? What's that? Well, if you'd ever given anything away before, you'd know. Every time you give anyone over three thousand dollars, you have to hand the government another thirty percent. Coolidge. Oh, for another Coolidge. After you, J.B.? I wouldn't ride in the same car with you. I walked out. <laughs> well, enjoy your stroll, J.B.? Well, at any rate, it gave me time to think things over. You know, you could have walked down one flight and taken the elevator at the next floor. I was so mad I never thought of it. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better anyway. Tom, I love that girl, Judy, dearly. She reminds me of Edith when I was caught now. But I can't bear to see money spent foolishly. Particularly mine. Well, I thought you wanted to make her happy. That's it. It's making her miserable. Oh. She has a heart set on a horn, Tudor. What kind of fellow is he? An independent kind of chap. I like him. Well, get them married, then you're off the hook. Kurt, as much as I hate to admit it, I think you're right. But it's not going to be easy. Why not? It's jealous of me. <laughs> so you... <laughs> yeah, I'd use the elevator if you want to get there tonight. <clears throat> I don't know whatever possessed me to act like I did. Neither do I. How could you make up such a lie? What was the point? I guess my poor old brain isn't what it used to be. Pop, I'm sorry. But I still have my lucid moments. And if you let me stay around with you, I'll help to bring Danny back to her senses. Papa, if we only could. I beg your pardon. Don't let me interrupt you. Well, that's the way things stand, Danny. I can't place you for at least two weeks. But I'm willing to stake you and the boys in the meantime. We're being staked now. The guys are getting other offers from bands that are working. And I can't hold them together two weeks longer. Mm, that's a tough break. But keep in touch with me, though. You never can tell. Yeah, I will. So long. Thanks, Barney. <laughs> Let's give this number a quick going over before Danny gets back. He'll never know the difference. Supposing he does. He'd get sore. Well, aren't you going to sing with the band? No, that's all off. He told you? Well, not in so many words. He just acts that way. Well, go ahead and sing, Judy. I'd like to hear you myself. Maybe he's a reason you don't suspect. What do you mean? I'll tell you after I hear you sing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fellas, hit it. When I was young, I found a grim. 
them to gurgle in the social swim. The do's and don'ts and la di da to me were just a lot of blah. I used my silver spoon at birth for throwing me balls at my nerve. I always chose to thumb my nose at smarty clothes and party poles. I've ditched the rich and stable set to join the kitchen table set. together anyhow. <laughs> a couple of times there I, I thought the musicians were going to get away from you, but they got it, they didn't. <laughs> it's remarkable. Thanks, Pop. These fellas, you were great. I'll say you were. And you'll sing with a band or else. No, no, no. We gotta keep peace in the family. Danny's the boss and what he says goes. I'm doing all right, but you guys are just getting started. I wonder would the young men know a song I'm a little more familiar with. What's that, Pop? In the shade of the old apple tree. We can fake it. Fake it? Well, he means they can make it up as they go along. That's not necessary. The song's already written. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you like to hear it, Pop? I would very much indeed. Do you know the words, darling? I think so. Would you mind singing it for me? Sure. It takes me back to the time when I was caught and eaters. That was the song of the day then, and we danced to it together many times. Okay, fellas, hit it! Okay, let's go. <laughs> What in the name of goodness is that? Well, that's in the shade of the old apple tree. Glory be, what happened to it? Well, that's jive, Pop. Oh, is it? Would you mind saying it my words? How's that? I'll show you. Only this time, don't hit it. Kind of caress it. Now. He's carrying. What? His wife left him for another guy. Well, let's get his mind off her. Take the chorus of your song again, Judy. One, two. I want to brush all the plush in the gush. I'd rather get left than be right. I'm just a square in social circles. Anyone here want to fight? I'm sorry, Danny. We were... Just killing time till you got here. No, that's all right. You should rehearse. If the band went to work, you'd have to. Am I your singer? You were going to be. But looks like all bets are off, fellas. There isn't a chance of us getting a job for two weeks. Two weeks? Oh, I, I want you guys to realize that I appreciate your willingness to string along with me. There's wishing you a lot of luck wherever you go. I'll see you later. Wait a minute, do you fellas believe in this band? Sure we do, Judy, but we gotta work. Well, will you give me 24 hours to make a deal for you? Well, what are you gonna do? Quiet, I've got a thought. Well, what do you say? Okay, Judy. Wonderful, but don't say anything to Danny. Just go next door and keep him there till you hear from me. Come on, Gwen. What's the dough? Billingsley. He's coming here to an audition. When'd you fix that? I haven't. I'm going to. Can you? Get me the store club, please. I can try. He'll never come here for you. Nobody will for Walter Winchell. Walter Winchell? Sure, they're pals. Billings, you'll do anything he says. 
Uh, give me Mr. Billingsley's office, please. What makes you think Winslow's going to ask the boss up here? Wait and see. Hello, Sally. Give me your boss. How am I doing? You'll get 20 years. Hi, Sherman. Get this. It's hot off the press. No, no, Sherman. Get the store club off your mind for a second. I want you to meet me at the York Towers, apartment 32A, in a half hour. You're going to hear one of the greatest bands in the country. Okay, don't fail to be here. Well, he's coming over. Now, go next door and tell Daddy to get the boys ready in their tuxedos to audition in 20 minutes. i got to change and instruct Pop what to do in Billings that gets here. Now, hurry. Are you nervous, young man? No, but I'm puzzled. I can't understand how Judy arranged this. Oh, she has a way with her. Apparently. Mr. Billingsley? Yes. Come in. Where's Mr. Winslow? He had to leave, but he'd be in touch with you. That's so? Mr. Winston, Mr. Billingsley. Well, how are you, son? Very glad to meet you, sir. Walter Winslow tells me you've got a great band. He did? Well, I didn't know I knew. Anytime he doesn't know about anything, I want to hear. Well, yeah, but he's never... Well, I'll take Winslow's opinion anytime. Go ahead, give out with the tunes. Yes, sir. Sit down. Thank you. Okay, boys. What do you think? Excellent. Do you really? Of course I do. band, Mr. Wilton. Thank you very much. But you, Judy, you were great. And I'm not too surprised either. I always knew you were tops, but I didn't think you had all that talent. Besides, it's a terrific kick for me to have Judy come through like this. Just goes to prove you can get so used to a person doing one thing that you fail to realize they can do anything else. <laughs> can you understand that, Mr. Wilton? Oh, sure, sure. I understand it. Very well. I'm proud of you, Judy. Thank you, Mr. Billingsley. Uh, you haven't heard the best yet. Sing the waltz from Judy. 
Nothing doing. No waltzes. There's never been a waltz played in the Stork Club. Huh. Can't be much of a place. The Stork Club was built on soft, peppy music, and it never stops. That's why I have three orchestras, understand? Oh, he understands. Good. You open tomorrow night. So come and see me in the morning, Mr. Wilden. We'll make a deal and sign the contract. <sighs> He'll be there, Mr. Billingsley. Oh, uh, and by the way, Judy, I'd know that voice of yours anywhere. Besides, I was sitting with Mr. Winchell when you phoned. Good night, all. Danny, we're in. Oh, Danny, oh, Danny isn't it wonderful? I don't think so. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't like the way I got it. Why not? What's wrong with it, son? Well, I don't think a band was ever engaged under such circumstances before. An expensive apartment to rehearse in, all the food we want to eat. The boss arrives for a nice cozy audition and we're hired. Well, what could be sweeter? I don't want any part of it. Now, look, Danny. You can't let personal feelings do us out of the best job in town. That's right, That's Danny. Well, no, and I won't let him. I know how Danny feels and maybe has a right to. Maybe he hasn't. That's between us. These guys have nothing to do with it. You and the band have to stick together. We don't. You see, Danny, I can leave with a clear conscience. You couldn't. Well, I've got everything I could ask for. Singing with your band would just be an anticlimax. I'm the one that's bowing out. Maybe this is beside the point. But if you ever really fall in love, you'll trust the girl. Don't cry. Everything will be all right. <laughs> Why do girls always have to go for dumb guys? Maybe it's because it makes us look smart. Well, I am smart. Maybe I've been acting like I'm dumb. But I've got a brain somewhere in my head and I'm going to use it. Judy, what are you doing? I'm going to send these things back where they came from. Oh, why? Nobody can buy me. There isn't enough money to make me forget who I am. I've got character I have. I'm not so easily tempted. I can't be bought by a few mean three. No, sir, I've got brains. Yes? Judy Peabody to see you. Oh, fine. Send her in. Well, good morning, Judy. I've got a little surprise for you. I don't want any more surprises. What's the matter with you? We can't go on like this, Mr. Billingsley. Like what? I'm in love with Danny. Well, it's all right with me. Well, it's not with him. You're all mixed up. I know I am, and I don't want to be. He's as jealous as... Jealous? Well, certainly. Who wouldn't be after all the things you've given me? I've given you. Oh, Sherman, don't be so anonymous. Say, listen, I'm a married man. That's why you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, I've got to get you straightened out. Now, get this. I never gave you anything, ever. Huh? Why should I? What are you in my life? Well, I don't know, but somebody's behind this. I know this fella, Curtis. He comes to the Stork a lot. He won't talk, though. I've asked him to tell me. Well, don't worry about it too much, Judy. I've been in this town for years, and nobody ever gives anything away for long without letting you know why. You just sit tight. You're a clever girl. Stick to your singing. It's your real future. But I can't sing with the band the way things are between Danny and me. Well, either you do or I don't want the band. Oh, I'll open tonight. Don't worry about that. That a girl. We'll be very happy together. I understand, Mr. Billingsley. No, you don't, but you will. Come in, I want to straighten you out, too. Don't lose your temper. Why not? Wilton, what do you think I am, a chump? Not exactly. Thanks. Are you a chump? No, sir. Oh, you're sure about yourself? That's right. But not of me, huh? Well, Mr. Billingsley, my eyes have been opened. How would you like somebody to close him again? Can't we settle this like gentlemen? Well, now you're talking my language. I like you, Wilton. I like your band. And I like Judy. Yes, sir. Don't say yes, sir, like that. Sorry. Come here. 
Look at those photographs. Take a good look at them. Those are the only women in my life. That one's pretty young, isn't she? That's my daughter. Oh, they all are except my wife, and I'm married to her. Oh, I see. It's about time. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Billingsley. That letter should have tipped you off. Tom Curtis isn't my lawyer. Tom Curtis? What letter? Oh, she didn't show you the letter. No, and I wonder why. Well, forget I mentioned it to you. Now, I've had enough of you to keep your personal affairs out of the store club. That's all. Yes, sir. Well? Mr. Billingsley, what would you do if you were in my spot? I'd stop bothering me. Nothing much. Billingsley's okay. I was wrong about you and him. There, you see? No, I don't. You don't? It's got to be somebody. Oh, you know who it is. I told you. Pop? Certainly. Oh, how could it be? Well, he's a very rich man and a good man. Wait till you meet his wife. Have you? Naturally. Why do you look at me like that, Danny? We're never going to get together if you don't believe in me. Oh, Judy... I wish I could. Oh, you've got it, Danny. It's the only way it'll work out. Hi, Judy. Oh, hello, Mr. Coretti. Uh, how's your friend Pop, the boss boy? Oh, <laughs> oh, that was a very funny gag, wasn't it? <laughs> he breaks thirty-two dollars worth of dishes, and she calls it a gag. Who was he? An old mix she brought around. He had a brogue that thick. Somebody owes me thirty-two dollars for dishes. Oh, Danny, I can explain it. Sure you can. But break it in on somebody else. I want to speak with Mr. Curtis. He's not in yet? Why not? He's not at home either. Never mind who it is. I'll call again. Hi, Pop. What goes? I was calling your lawyer. My lawyer? That man Curtis has trained all morning. For what? I thought he might speak to Danny on your behalf. Well, that wouldn't do any good. It might. I'll go to my room and brush up a bit before I go out. Jealousy is a terrible thing. Love should be tolerant till truth breaks through the clouds of doubt. Gee, that's beautiful, Pop. Who said that? I did. That's me. Oh, come in, Mrs. Bates. I know now I've lost him. Well, I'll be glad to help you look for him. A friend of mine in the building says he lives here. Well, a lot of guys live here. A lot? How many? Oh, Twelve or fourteen. You poor child. Well, what instrument does he play? He used to play the zither. Oh, well, he's not with these cats. Cats? Why don't you try the Salvation Army? I'm sure my husband wouldn't be there. Oh, oh, I'll bet you mean Pop. Oh, he lives here with me. You admit it. Oh, oh, oh now, Mrs. Bates, there's nothing wrong with it. Your husband was drowning and I saved his life and I've been trying to get him a job. He's down and out. Mr. Bates is a rich man. How's that again? Mr. Bates is a very rich man. Oh! Oh, then he's the one. Oh, it's too good to be true. Mrs. Bates, you've got to take your husband back. Don't you want him? No, and he doesn't want me. Why didn't he tell me who he was? He did. Then he denied it. I'm sorry, I can't follow this. Neither can I. He's practically ruined my life. How? Well, I got a boyfriend. 
I mean, I had a boyfriend. And Jerry cut him out? Oh, no. Pop loves you. You're all he ever talks about. Miss Peabody, I can't believe it. I want to go to him. Oh, no, you don't. Not on your life. Our men don't trust us. we got to teach him a lesson. I tried that and lost him. Well, this time you do it my way and you'll get him back. Uh, by the way, do you always dress like that? Yes, I do. Why? You meet me in the parish shop at Lots Fifth Avenue at 2 this afternoon. We're going to the store club tonight. The store club? Whatever for? You leave that to me. I can hardly contain myself. Oh, you've got to. Now, when Pop comes in, make believe you think the worst and walk out on him. Is he here? Now? Certainly. Tell me, Mrs. Bates, is your slate clean? My slate clean? Yes, he seems terribly jealous of a Mr. Bascom. Well, that's ridiculous. Clarence Bascom is a harmless old bachelor. He courted me years ago, and Jerry can't stand the sight of him. <laughs> Like Coming. Now, death. whatever you do, don't no, let on and be firm. Judy, where'd you put me? Oh! Well, Mr. Bates, explain yourself. No, Edith, take it easy. Are you going to believe me or what you see? Who could believe you, you scoundrel, you philanderer, you viper, you snake in the grass? Don't ever speak to me again. This is the end. The gods have done me in. They were laying for me. I've lost the upper hand. Who was that? Me wife. Your wife. Couldn't you tell? Oh, well, relax, Pop. Remember, love should be tolerant till truth breaks through the clouds of doubt. And if you want to know who said that, you did. The fact is, I read that in a very cheap book. Please. 
body stare, Nat. I never forget the face. You've looked at mine long enough to remember it the next time you see it. Yes, sir. Put it thirty-two dollars for the broken dishes on your bill, sir. Yes, and add five dollars for yourself and forget you ever saw me. It would be a pleasure, sir. It is mutual. Would you like to order now, Miss Tibari? Yes, I'll have some ginger ale, please. And you, sir? The same, with about three fingers of bourbon. You, sir. Do you drink a lot, Pop? Well, I tell you, I can't get a lot. I heard you were caught when you suspended that. I'm a god. Agent. I'm an innocent man. A very innocent man. Yes, Jerry, so it appears. Good evening, young lady. Oh, Mrs. Bates, I hope you don't blame me. Not at all, my dear. But wasn't you to be somebody else? No, it wouldn't. Ah, a love match. I think I'll skip the next round of this battle. Excuse me, please. Good riddance. At least she'll talk to you. You won't listen to me. You've got to get me out of this. How? Tell her the facts. Well, she won't believe the facts any more than Danny does. You can try. Okay. You are great. You've got a lot of work. He's really squirming. I don't think I'll be able to go through with this, Judy. Well, you've got to. If you nail him down right this time, he's yours for life. She says she's going to divorce you and marry somebody who appreciates her. She can't. I'll fight it. I'll take it to the Supreme Court. Tell her that. You're out in front by 20 lengths. Don't carry it too far. Leave it to me. Well. I think you got a chance. Oh, yeah. It's going to be tough, though. I don't deserve it. First, you got to promise to count to 10 before losing your temper. I've always done that. Then we'll make it 20. All right, all right. Next, you can never take your shoes off in the living room. A man can't live under those conditions. Will you or won't you? All right, all right. And? Oh, there's more. You must promise never under any circumstances to be jealous of Clarence Bascom. Bascom. Ah, oh, I see it all now. She'd tie me hands behind me back for the rest of my life, would she? No, no, not if I know it, she won't. Oh, it's very slick of you. Very slick of you indeed, Mrs. Bates. You and your stipulations. And me agreeing to them. Now, calm yourself, Pa. No, no, Judy, this goes deeper than your innocent eyes can see. But Jerry. Don't Jerry me. You're not going to pull the wool over me eyes as you did in the past. That isn't true. And I'm going out of here. No, you're not. Not till you pay the check. They're very funny about that in here. Somebody bring me the check. If you leave here, Jerry Bates, you'll never see me again. That's what I had in mind. I'm ashamed of you, Pa. Well, I... Put this to Danny, will you? Then I'll get him. Bring me the check. I'm not going to wait here any longer. Pop, are you really leaving? Of course I am. You'll be sorry someday. Well, if I am, I'd be glad of it. This is from one of your fans. Thanks. Hey, fellas, the boss wants to hear old apple tree. We'll bake it in tea right after this chorus. It was a lot different, too, wasn't it, Pop? I know you haven't forgotten. Even though it was a long time ago, 40 years, you told me about it yourself. It brought tears to your eyes when you did. Look at her, Pop. Isn't she beautiful? And just think what she was then. Why, every boy on the block hoped she'd look his way. But she only had eyes for one. A young, wild Irishman. He had a right to be jealous. It was sweet. Stupid. In 1950, it was romantic. Where they danced to the same song they're playing now. But I guess that's the trouble. It just isn't romantic anymore. 
Over here. Edith, will you dance with me once again to the tune of our song? I'd be pleased to, Jerry. Yes. I know what I'm saying. I'm sorry. Well, I am. And it comes from the bottom of my heart. That's patched up. Yes, isn't it wonderful? So long, I can't remember. No, it couldn't be a waltz. They wouldn't dare. No, sir. That's a waltz, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, what's the idea? Good old-fashioned walls. Uh, by the way, Tom Curtis, that fellow we were discussing, is at the table next to Judy's. Would you like to meet him? No, thanks. Hey, Tom. Take over. Do me a favor, will you, Gwen? Sure, why? Go and tell that guy Curtis he's one on the phone in the first booth. Okay, Daddy. You wanted on the telephone in the first booth. Thank you. Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Come in. Mr. Curtis, I'm Danny Wilson. How do you do? It's rather close in here, isn't it? I liked it that way. Well, it, it's much more comfortable out at the bar. Uh-huh, but Billingsley's got a rule. Anyone who fights in the store club is barred for life. Well, I kind of wish I'd been barred yesterday. Look, Mr. Curtis, some time ago I was in a cave about this size with a Jap. Well, as you gather, I'm here to tell a tale. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what happened to the Jap? <clears throat> I know I'm supposed to double over at this point, but there really isn't room. Uh, Mr. Curtis, there's only one thing I want from you. Well, I hope I've got it. I want the truth about that letter you wrote to Judy Peabody and everything that's behind it. Oh, is that all? Oh, that's very simple. Miss Peabody saved Mr. Bates from drowning. He wanted to reward her and still remain anonymous at... All very innocent, I assure you. Oh, well, thanks, Mr. Curtis. That's great. So can I buy you a drink? Yes, you can. But you want to be sued within an inch of your life. <laughs> but, Judy, dear, you've given all your time to us. What are you going to do about your young man? I'm just going to tell him the truth. But, Judy, you can't do that. You've already told him the truth and he doesn't believe it. Pop, what can I do? Tell him another lie. What lie? I haven't worked anything out. I've seen you at work and I've every confidence in your ability. All right, but you've got to back me up. We'll do that in more ways than one. While Edith and I were dancing, we talked about a little surprise for you. Oh, Danny. You know Mr. and Mrs. Bates. How do you do? Danny, I have to sing with the band or Mr. Billings is going to let us all go. That's his privilege. I won't till you believe in me and I know you won't let me till you know the truth. That's right. But, Danny, you're going to hear it right now. I'm listening. Uh, uh, it, it started many, many years ago, in uh, 1849, wasn't it, Pop? Uh, yeah, yeah, 49. That's right, in the summer. It was the year of the gold rush. Yeah, I saw the picture. How'd you like Charlie in it? Stick to the subject. Well, you see, it started the day I saved Pop from drowning. That's when he first discovered who I was. 
I have a strawberry mark on my left thigh, and my bathing suit doesn't cover it. Pop noticed it. You'll see it someday. Well, Pop casually mentioned that his father knew a man in Alaska with the very same marking. They shared a claim in the big yellow tail mine. Interesting? Very. Oh, I mean the way Judy tells it. I know the story well. But I never get tired of hearing her related. Go ahead, Judy. Well, right about here, I think I ought to mention my grandfather's map. Oh, very good-looking man he was, too. The map was a mine. Yes, yes. A pardon me, too. Well, my grandfather was lost in the blizzard of 51, and Pop and his father have been looking for me ever since. Pop changed his name to Butler while searching for me. Well, of course, now you're very rich. No. And this is the part you won't believe. The man that Pop's father thought was my grandfather turned out to be no relation of mine at all. Well, how did you find that out? My grandmother told me. Well, now that makes sense. Why didn't you tell me that in the first place? I didn't think you'd believe it. Oh, Judy, you underestimate me. You see, I do believe in you. Now, doesn't that make you eligible to sing with the band? Hurry back, you haven't heard the surprise. If I had a dozen hearts, and if you had only one. What a liar. If I had a dozen hearts, I would love you twelve times one. Yellowtail mine. If I had a dozen lips, I would say. Grandfather's map. Twelve times a day. Strawberry mark. Darling, I love you. Well, seeing is believing. If I had a dozen arms, they would all be holding you. But I forgive you. If I had a dozen dreams, in your arms they would all come true. No, why? Although... Because I love you. I know a dozen hearts are fun. I could love you more than I do with one. I love your pie, Faith. I'll be waiting for you over with Pop. Okay, sweetie. That was lovely, Judy. Thanks. Well, Pop, what's the big surprise? Judy, you saved me twice. When I met you and tonight. I can't repay you, but I have an idea. I've discussed it with Edith, and we hope you'll be pleased that I'm going to mention you in my will. Oh, no, that's out, Pop. Not that I don't appreciate the thought and all, but, oh, I don't know. I don't seem to be able to get along with money. My happiness will come with Danny, sing with the band on those one-night stands. Bad hotel, bad food, but we'll be together. We'll be riding on cloud nine just outside of heaven. I see what you mean, and I think you're right. Two young kids in love might get all mixed up with a million in the bank. A million? Keep talking, Pop. Maybe you can change my mind.